Good morning, everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, good evening. And also, we uh, say hello to those who are still on bed. They will be joining us shortly, uh, either from the US, which is very far. And uh, it's a great pleasure to see you all today. This is uh, one of our uh, regular celebration of a very important day because it is uh, celebrating the achievement and uh, appreciating the remarkable progress the whole world has made towards women's rights and women empowerment and women actually being engaged in the far front of our uh, progress to achieve the sustainable development goals. Uh, it's my great pleasure to have uh, or to welcome you to this conference. This is a, a regular event we celebrate on the day where the United Nations or when the United Nations is internationally celebrating the International Women's Day. We will hear later about the history of this day very briefly. And also, uh, in, shortly, we will also listen to the video message broadcasted by the United Nations Secretary General on this particular occasion, which will give a broader idea about where we are, the progress women made. Uh, the World Association for Sustainable Development is actually a big organization. It's, uh, it's scattered all over the world. It is a forum bringing people from all over the world, from all over the world. And we are very proud to have been in the forefront of addressing these global issues of equality and uh, anything to do with uh, our success or our road to achieve the sustainable development goals. We have been uh, engaged with this global sustainable development issue since 19, since, two, since 1998. Uh, and this year we're going to have our 19th international conference. In terms of women, we have been involved heavily uh, in different perspectives. One of them is to make sure women are actually fully participating in our, our organization in the different levels. And I'm going to show you very quickly, brief uh, presentation about us and what we have done and what we want to do so you can all join us. But before I do that, I would like just to uh, say a few logistical or to mention a few logistical and housekeeping issues. Number one, this conference is live streamed across all our uh, social media uh, channels in World Association for Sustainable Development, Middle Eastern Knowledge Economy Institute, Best of MENA, uh, Best of Sudan, because you know we have a large or a big project on the diaspora in our diaspora project. So it's, it is being broadcasted live all over the world. Please share this Facebook pages with all your friends and network. So you don't really need to come into the Zoom. We will be look, uh, you can watch us from anywhere you like. Secondly, uh, according to the, I mean, there were lots of regulations and copyright issue and uh, privacy rules. And particularly we are committed to every regulations in the European Union. Uh, one of them is to make sure people are all given the opportunity uh, to either stay on, on camera or they can hide themselves. Although I really encourage everyone, like I always encourage my students to be on camera because this is the least we can do to engage with each other, particularly in this very difficult time. So this is the second one. So if you don't want to show in camera, you can hide yourself, those who are in the Zoom. But I would really encourage you all to be on, the, on, on camera as much as possible. We have fantastic women speakers today from all over the world. And every year we have uh, women from all over the world participating in our event. The video you have seen featured very little really from the number of women. These are all women engaged within WAST, whether they are women or girls engaged within WAST. So let me quickly uh, show you uh, a, a quick presentation about uh, what who we are and what we do. And I think there's much of the information you will find it in our website. But let me just start by uh, sharing with you few, um, if you like, few, um, few issues and background. So we are celebrating the United Nations International Women's Day. The World Association for Sustainable Development has been doing this for many years. But who we are and what we do, Uh, there is plenty of information in our website, wild.org.uk. Please go to the website and read it, and you will see uh, the, the work we have been doing a global forum that bring together experts from across the world. So that's really the bottom, if you like, uh, or the core or the values which you are trying to achieve. Uh, 
We have started 20 years ago advocating ourselves to help the developing countries to bridge the gap with developing countries so people they know about them, we learn from them, and so on. So you can see lots of uh, stuff in the website. We are academic, professional, and non-political organization. We promote the population of everyone across the world, not necessarily in the United Kingdom. And we are very much advancing the knowledge in developing countries, particularly in Africa and Middle East. We have worked a lot there. We facilitate the exchange of knowledge, and we also bring together experts from across the world. Quickly, there are some sustainable development goals, but one of the really important ones we believe is the partnership for the results. And that's what we have been trying to achieve in our work. We really want people to come together all over the world. Men, women, black, white, uh, different ethnicity, religious. We, we just want people to work together. We have lots of partners who worked with us in the past. They are still working with us. I'm sure these slides are not very much updated, but these are at least give you example. We work with everyone, United Nations agencies, <coughs> excuse me, governments, uh, commercials, uh, sorry, um, uh, brightest sector, students, universities, publishers, all, all over the world. From San Lucia to UAE, to Bahrain, to UNESCO, to South Africa, to Sudan, to everywhere in the world. We also have clear and strong partnership with United Nations Children and US uh, major group. We are very keen on the young and the youth. We have lots of activities, including conferences, teaching and learning, debates and seminar. We publish uh, four or five book series. One of them is very famous, is the Wales well Sustainable Development Outlook. We have lots of international journals, all international free journals. We do development projects. One of them is very fa the famous project we did with uh, the one of the largest library of science and technology policy donated by the University of Sussex. We gave it to Sudan, we transferred it all the way to Sudan and East Africa. We have a very rich uh, online library. We have a very strong expert directory where you can actually communicate with people. And we run lots of high level interviews and we also have big projects on youth engagement. Uh, this is just a quick one. The top one is our last conference face-to-face -face, also hosted by the International uh, Maritime Organization of the United Nations in London. The one in 2018 was in Geneva. And in 2017, we were in Bahrain. And this is how we do, we travel. We try to engage people from all over the world. Everything is available in our website. But just to give you a glimpse of our 2018 conference in Geneva, you can see on the opening ceremony, there are more women than men. And it was remarkably uh, acknowledged by the United Nations itself. At the official opening, we had uh, His Excellency or Her Excellency, Dr. Gail Rigobert on our advisory board and the Minister of Education and Innovation and Sustainable Development for San Lucia. We have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Spain. She was the Executive Director of the International Trade. And also we have our Excellency Olga, who is the Executive Secretary of the United Nations. So we always have the women in participating in our work. You can see from the pictures, I will quickly go to them. You can see we have a good balance. We're trying to have women to dominate what we do because women across the world are as bigger than men in terms of the numbers. So we're trying our best. You can also see the diversity from the faces. In terms of who we invite, whom we have the privilege to speak in our conference, we also make sure we have a good balance of women, as you can see from these pictures. So we really always, from all over the world, lead different women and so on and so forth. However, despite all our efforts and other international organizations, including the United Nations itself, you can see still we don't see women are as equal as men. This is our latest conference on e-learning uh, last year uh, in, uh, during the COVID. But you can still see, despite all our efforts, women are not as equal, equally represented as men. This is just last month, higher education in the Middle East and uh, North Africa. Is still, we are working very hard to get as many women on board as possible. Quickly, this is from New Jersey, Atlantic in 2011, our international conference. You can, I'm just giving you an example. You can see how we always been very keen to get women in, on board. This is from Bahrain. This is from uh, San Lucia. This is uh, interviews we run. This is one of them was from the UN 
Yosem um, uh, Ambassador Kam Ambassador, which is a young girl from United Arab Emirates, Saad Al Hamadi. Uh, this is one of the winners of the of the of the 2020 uh, Young Talented for Science and Technology by UNESCO. She is a Sudanese doing her PhD in South Africa. So we are engaging with women, trying to get them. We are very pleased today. We're going to officially launch our newest journal, which is Wale Journal of Women and Sustainable Development, and also our Wale Journal for Sustainable of Youth and Sustainable Development. This is a picture from a training we conducted for the police leaders in the Middle East, particularly United Arab Emirates. The two pictures, you can see them. They came all, all the way to us. I remember at the University of Brighton, they were being trained on knowledge and learning. This is one of the examples we have run this in, uh, in London. It's about uh, human rights and women as leader in change and development, uh, in, engaging with the United Nations and UN Habitat. This was a workshop in Sudan. You can also see the number of women is really, I'm very pleased to see all these things happening. This was a, a workshop on uh, implementation of sustainable development public policy. This is our library. You can please go and browse it, share it. We also try in our expert directive to feature women leaders. On the top here, you have Dr. Suhair Hamad Neil. She was voted the best surgeon in the United Kingdom and was given that award by Her Excellency the Prime Minister at that time, uh, Theresa May. And we're trying to feature all these people in our directory. This is one of our really, one of our founders and one of our distinguished women leader across the world, Professor Beverly Anderson. She used to be the Dean of the School of Business at um, California, San Marcos. She is a really one of the examples. We're really very proud to see her everywhere, not just in the US, but she's a global, Character. She used to be the, the president of the United States American uh, Marketing Society and so on. So we have people engaged. This is our youth engagement program. This is a picture from Bahrain. We're very proud when we saw this. This is a group of girls and boys in Bahrain. And the girls are dominant, as you can see, trying to solve problem of conflict, uh, terrorism, how people they can live together. So we have been really engaged with many of these uh, an initiative, it's called Together Save, which is a brilliant uh, role by women in terms of helping others. This is a library I told you earlier. Now, we have uh, a very uh, strong and rich program for women, and it's called Women Leadership Program. It can be a postgraduate diploma, a master or an MBA, which we are very happy to deliver and uh, with any academic institution across the world. So please feel free to contact us. And if you would like to see how we can cooperate and partner together to deliver this course from London, from across the world to your uh, university or academic institution, we can deliver it either through entirely distance learning or through face-to-face. -face. Hopefully after this COVID will be be compacted fully within the next four or five months. We expecting by maybe September, November, we will be able to travel so we can do it face to face or we can do it a mix. We have an online communication. We can do it in classrooms through your own uh, basis in your country. Uh, so this is also, we can explore it uh, offline with any institution interested engage with us. This is just one of the of the programs relating to women, but we have lots of programs where we will be very happy to deal with you. We have made uh, considerable impact. We are very pleased. Uh, in 2018, the United Nations Joint Inspection Unit spoke about how uh, they see the work we have done across the diaspora in science and technology, engaging with young, and so on and so forth. I will just for the time, just go quickly. Examples. This is, we have run lots of workshops and webinars to try to help the community across the world in the UK and others. This is one of them, children under lockdown was led by three distinguished women. One of them is a, is a well-known head teacher in London, Remy, a professor of physiotherapy from Cairo University and a, a major, a senior consultant from United Arab Emirates, Dr. Amani and so on, and with also involving kids, as you can see them. This is a very, uh, one of my favorite pictures from Indonesia, from University of, uh, in Surabaya, uh, Erlanga University. I was very pleased to see women leading the university. And this picture, I like it very much because it involves all level of women engagement at the university. From a senior professor, 
uh, I think one of the deputies of the of the rector or the vice chancellor to a postgraduate uh, researchers to one senior administrator to a student. So you can see all of them really well uh, represented it here. This is from Sudan when we went to Sudan, and in Sudan in particular, women have played a critical role in really eradicating not just dictatorship and fighting against this dictatorship in Sudan because Omar al-Bashir, the president of Sudan, who was ruling Sudan for 30 years, has made major, uh, if you like, changes to democracy in the whole region, in Africa or uh, Middle East. And women have been in the leading front of, of, of really uh, leading that revolution in Sudan. And this is two major pictures. They have been spread all over the world. On my right hand side, this girl, uh, uh, really, uh, I don't know what to say, but she is. She was being cited across all the media when uh, the, the, the the military services were trying to try to stop and kill protesters. This girl was actually stood, or she stood, for all the guns and the, and she was actually throwing back what they have been throwing at the protesters. So she was. Uh, taking even life ammunition. Uh, I think this is one of the pictures she was being given an award, but she really one of the major names fighting in front of even men and boys. I mean, the picture you will see on videos, she was she stood in front of men women, men and boys fighting against uh, military and uh, uh, security services. On the second hand, this picture also for Allah was very famous, uh, which I have seen in, may, you may have seen it across the world. So I would like to finish here. This is the last time I was, or we had the opportunity face to face. This was a big march by women from all over the world in Oxford Street in London, 19, 2019. The last time we were able to meet face to face. I would like to finish here because of the time. And uh, I would like to ask uh, kindly, uh, Mervin, if you can play for us one or two minutes message from the Secretary General so we can, I can, I will hand over to the, Chair of the first session. Mervin, can you play that video, please? This is a message from the US Secretary General. The COVID 19 pandemic has erased decades of progress towards gender equality. From high job losses to exploding burdens of unpaid care, from disrupted schooling to an escalating crisis of domestic violence and exploitation, women's lives have been upended and their rights eroded. Mothers, especially single mothers, have faced acute anxiety and adversity. The consequences will far outlast the pandemic. But women have also been on the front lines of pandemic response. They are the essential workers, keeping people alive and holding economies, communities and families together. They are among the leaders who have kept prevalence rates lower and countries on track for recovery. This year's International Women's Day highlights the transformative power of women's equal participation. We are seeing it ourselves at the United Nations, where I am proud that we have achieved gender parity in UN leadership posts for the first time in history. The evidence is clear. When women lead in government, we see bigger investments in social protection and greater inroads against poverty. When women are in parliament, countries adopt more stringent climate change policies. When women are at the peace table, agreements are more enduring. And with women now serving in equal numbers at the top leadership posts at the United Nations, we are seeing even more concerted action to secure peace, sustainable development, and human rights. In a male-dominated world, with a male-dominated culture, gender equality is essentially a question of power. And males are an essential part of the solution. I call on countries, companies and institutions to adopt special measures and quotas to advance women's equal participation and achieve rapid change. As we recover from the pandemic, support and stimulus packages must target women and girls specifically, including through investments in women-owned businesses and the care economy. Pandemic recovery is our chance to leave behind generations of exclusion and inequalities. Whether running a country, a business or a popular movement, women are making contributions that are delivering for all and driving progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals. It's time to build an equal future. 
this is a job for everyone and for the benefit of everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mervin, and uh, apologies for the chair for uh, just having more few minutes. I am going to stop here, and please feel free to browse our website, contact us, and we will uh, take uh, over. Uh, I would like to, to start by thanking everyone who contributed to this event, it started from Mervin, you have just seen him, the remarkable Mervin who is doing all this job, all these videos is Mervin, Janet, all the people who are watching us, and most importantly, the women leaders who are going to join us now from all over the world, they have given up a critical time of their day. For me, education is the key for my future.